This is a common question that, that people ask is why would you do a two and a half inch lift when you're lowering the subframe one inch? Does that not just negate the entire effect of the lift? Hey guys, welcome back to HRG TV. My name is Ben. This is my buddy Randy Ryan. Hey, it's uh, Randy here, Camping Randy uh, on Instagram and YouTube, ridgelinestore.com. Now on this channel, we normally do dumb stuff. The ridge line dominating. Holy crap. Now, would you consider lifting a Honda Ridge line dumb stuff? Depends on who you ask. Because <laughs> some people you ask, they're like, what the hell are you doing? Why would you lift a minivan? All right, so today we're going to do a two and a half inch lift kit on this Ridge line. To be clear, this is a 2019 Ridge line, but all Ridge lines from 2017 up to 2022 and 23, they're not 23, changing. they're all going to be the same as far as fitment. Okay. So let's talk a little bit about this Ridgeline first. What do we got here? This is a 2019 Honda Ridgeline Sport. I went with the Sport because I don't like all of the lane mitigation and all that stuff. Right now we have a one and a half inch lift um, on the front and on the back because I have my bed rack. I have the rooftop tent. So a lot of times you'll see the one and a half inch leveling kit, which will set your ridge line like that because it normally has a rake. This is the front of the truck. I wanted to go with a one and a half inch on the front, one and a half inch on the back because I tow a camper and I have all that gear. Right. So it sits really good for me. So to clarify what he's saying, if you do a one and a half, one and a half combo, it's gonna sit really high in the back with no load on the back. So if you have a bunch of gear in a trailer like he does, then it's gonna sit level once it is loaded. We put 30,000 miles on this truck with a one and a half inch lift without issue. I said, let's do a two and a half. Let's, let's do a one inch subframe drop, a two and a half inch spacer, and then the axles think it's at a one and a half inch lift. So there's no stress. You get a two and a half inch lift. You don't have to do any crazy adjustment, uh, track bars or ball joints or anything. So, I want to interject something real quick because yeah. this is a common question that, that people ask. Why would you do a two and a half inch lift when you're lowering the subframe one inch? Does that not just negate the entire effect of the lift? And to that I say, depends on how you look at it because what you gain from the two and a half inch lift is A, more tire clearance and B, better approach breakover and depart angles which means the front bumper is going to sit higher the center of the truck's going to sit higher the clearance under the engine or under the rear differential doesn't change between the one and a half and the two and a half inch lift if you think about like a jeep or any other normal off-roader that's the same they have the same thing like in a, a, a jeep you've got a solid axle the pumpkin on the center section of the axle still hangs down no matter what lift you put on one of the strong suits that independent suspension vehicles have is clearance under the car because you don't have that center diff on the uh, solid axle hanging down. So there you go. That's the upside for doing a two and a half. For a place like Uari, an inch can make all the difference between getting through a trail and not getting through the trail. So just having that little bit of extra is gonna keep him from bottoming out on all of those obstacles. Also, we have the oversized tires that you guys know from my channel, which are the 265 60 18s. If you have the 20 inch wheels, you wanna go 265 50 20s. The reason for that is if you wanna show this real quick. So if you go uh, over 30 and a half inches on your tires, you're gonna rub. So I know some guys wanna go bigger than 30 and a half inches, um, which you can't, it's gonna rub unless you re-engineer it like a couple people have. With a sledgehammer. Well, it's actually, you can't because this is part of the unibody subframe oh, and no. part of the ACE body structure. So if you're in an accident, this is the cage that protects your passenger. So you really don't wanna mess with that. Um, also, if you put spacers or you run an offset, you're gonna rub. So I have one inch spacers on here. I don't know if you can see Wait, them. so you say if you use spacers, you're gonna rub. Yeah, because what happens is it takes the tire and moves it out this way. But you have them. Yeah, I do. But Let's I'm saying- Explain that. <laughs> okay, so with the regular stock tires, you're fine at 30 and a half inches. When you put the one inch spacers on them, or if you go from a 50 offset to a 33 millimeter offset, mm -hmm. it brings the geometry out. Right. And when you turn, it comes this way. So if you just do the tires, your articulation and all that will not rub. The only time you'll have just a smidgen of rub is full lock backing up. And that's it. Mm. So right now we only have the inch and a half spacers on the front. Yep. And then we have the inch and a half spacers on the back. Gotcha. So okay. right now we're at a two inch lift with the tires from stock. 
For more detail on his setup, including all of the, the camping gear, because he is camping Randy after camping all. Camping Randy. <laughs> he, and I'm telling you, he's got all the gear. If you guys want to know about more detail about his truck, check him out on YouTube at Camping Randy. With all of that said, I think we should get started. No, I got I think I got one here. Yeah. All of the lines, hoses, wiring, everything is already long enough to do this. You don't have to change any wiring or hoses. You don't have to add anything. Oh. Like on our beast kits, you have to relocate a bunch of stuff. This pipe has enough flex. Mm -hmm. This You've one got, back here is yep, good. Yep, the AC here. lines can have plenty of room. I don't need that. Even the ground wires, plenty of. Yeah. Well, this whole engine is made to move around a little bit, so yeah. it, it has slack for that reason. So, and it's all, it all clears, nothing hits. Yeah. It just lowers down, there's room for it. This is just a piece of, I don't know, Flimsy. What does this even protect? I guess oh, no. it protects this knuckle back here for the drive shaft. That's pretty thin. I don't think it's protecting anything. Yeah. the hole oh yeah you just gotta move it over it's weird there's a lot of holes there i threaded it into the wrong hole completely <laughs> what the hell i put it in the wrong hole no wonder it didn't work it is working. yeah so this little cover's got to come off that's overlapped maybe not little oh no you don't have to take that off all right so there's just a little piece right here take that off and that off Yeah, just turn it and it'll it'll self-adjust a little bit. All right, now we can tighten it back up. It's gonna allow it to drop. It should press it. off of the rod. Exactly. So we're making contact right there, just ever so slightly. So the fix for that is gonna be to bend that metal out of the way just enough to where it doesn't contact. Like rolling fenders. That's what I'm gonna say, rolling fenders. Yeah, just like rolling a fender. Turn. Yep. Yeah. A little bit more. Clear. Okay. Now we're gonna place place our foam seal right around the steering 
column opening and that is going to seal it up Lefty Lucy. are equipped with a shelf just for that reason. We're at right here? Yeah, right there. Is it gonna stay? No, I'm just kidding. Oh, I was like, what are you talking about? I was like, I don't know that secret. <laughs> Man, you had me going. I was like, I was like, what? I got this uh, this book on bushcraft. Yeah, I suck at knots. And I'm telling you, man, it's like I'm learning how to do all these freaking truckers knots and fishermen's knots and Even trucker knots. I suck. I forgot how to do all of them. Going the right way? Yeah. Lefty Lucy. Damn, son. Well, I don't Who tightened that? <laughs> you guys. I'm going the right way, right? You are. Okay. Yes, that is the right way. Let's see here. Damn, hey, I was about to say, that was really on there. <laughs> I took it off. You're not used to these fancy tools, what I'm it not. is. I'm used to like Sears Roebuck. <laughs> Sears Roebuck from 19 to 50. Handed down from generation yeah. to generation made out of stone. All right, so once we figured out how to do this, we'll show you how to do it. Somehow we forgot how to get this part done. But it's gotta go, this has to go up and that has to go down. Once that's loose, then we can take this whole assembly out, but it's not coming off. It's sliding off. Yeah, the world is watching, Randy, come on. There it goes. There you go. Yep. All right, take the bolt off. I got it. It came loose. There yeah, it is. okay. Fucking hell, man. Is it off, off? Yeah. So now we gotta push the axle through, and then this should slide off the bottom of the strut. Okay. There we go. All right, watch my ABC sensor. Just take one to just be able to, yep. Slide that whole thing off. Thanks. Yeah, this is much easier to take. There, there it is. is. All There's... right. All we got to do is take these nuts off here, and then we're gonna. I'll make shit. I suck at it. You lift in, and I'll. I'll put lift. The bolts? Yeah, I'll lift. Okay. I'll throw it in there. You're a little taller. Yeah. Trying to line them up. I'm trying. Almost. No, I'm trying to line it up for you. Okay. Oh, oh that's fucking heavy. There you go. There we go. Give me one second. All right. Push up a little bit. Okay, one's on. I don't know if that'll help or not, but fuck okay. it. Oh, you know what? We need to tighten the tighten the nuts up there. Okay, let go. So this doesn't drop. All right. Ow, ow, my knee. My knee's like. It's rough on these old folks. You're what, 50? I'm almost 50. 51 now. Shit. It's definitely a young man's game. Okay, let go. In there? Yep. I think your truck's used to being lifted at this point. Okay, it wasn't too bad. So we don't make it look easy, it just is easy. <laughs> so 
let's everything back together. Cool. Oh, one of my brake pads fell off. Oh no! <laughs> that would have sucked some ass. Yeah, it would. We would have had a big problem. <laughs> Oh my gosh. I am a driveway mechanic and I just do things my own way at my own pace and it's weird when I work with somebody else. Honestly though, a lot of people that have these new ridge lines are gonna pay somebody, so. Yeah. No wonder it's taking so long. <laughs> you got the wrong fucking socket the whole time. Thanks. I think you did that on purpose to me. <laughs> <laughs> Made for a better time lapse. Two minutes and 30 oh, seconds. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're taking a little break from doing the install, and uh, Randy comes prepared when it comes to outdoorsy type stuff. So he actually brought his camper with him <laughs> to come down here for us to do this job. And now we're about to set up the Blackstone. We're gonna cook some burgers. And it's a beautiful day out here at the shop. We're taking a little rest. Resting our old bones, man. You're, he's, <laughs> this guy's older than me and I'm pretty old to be doing this kind of work. But uh, we're gonna just take a little rest here and recharge with some good food. Yeah, we'll get it. I just can't get over the size of that fucking spatula, bro. Yeah, Look, it's bigger than my hand. And you know what's cool about it? <laughs> There's that can opener. Oh, wow. Nice. Yeah, where's the beer at? Yeah, I got it in here. Oh, I was kidding. All right. <laughs> you know I don't go anywhere without beer. <laughs> I want one of those now. <laughs> Seriously. The spatula or the black? The one? spatula. Well, both, really. I mean, if I'm going to camp and do it right, I got to have all this stuff. All right, so we got done with the front. We did a two and a half, and it already had a one and a half in the rear, which is going to be the combination you're going to want to go with if you're not going to carry a bunch of gear and haul trailers. If you just want it for on the street, you're not going to go camping and carrying lots of stuff. The two and a half, one and a half is going to be the level combo. But we're going to go ahead and swap in the two inch spacer for the back. So that should bring it up nicely and it'll look really good. Now in the back, yeah, Randy's taking a nap. Uh, in the back, we're going to start with the subframe kit. And that basically entails four main bolts here. It's one right there, which you can't see because there's no light. Here, but right there's there. this one. And then basically there's two bolts holding the subframe bolt brackets on two there and then two right there and those will all get spacers and the whole thing will move down together as one should be quick and easy my finger keeps Let, that lefty trigger. lucy i know the trigger i keep having the freaking trigger <laughs> <laughs> have you never worked on a car before <laughs> Shut up. jeez i'm gonna put this lift kit on backwards it's gonna end up lowering it all right make sure okay that's the wrong way there we go <laughs> i did it again man <laughs> Turn it over. Turn it over. <laughs> <laughs> wrong way. Are you dyslexic, Randy? I don't know what the hell's wrong with me? I mean, we cut all of this out in the final edit, by the way.
tell the viewers what we found here. So this is 100% my fault. When we went with the one and a half inch spacers, it appears I never tightened anything and I lost one whole bolt. So this is how I've been driving around. <laughs> yeah, for everyone watching, we haven't started loosening anything. This was literally held on by hopes and dreams. One bolt here, one bolt in the back. This bolt's gone. So my dad can never see this video. Yeah, no, it's... Because he whooped my ass. Oh. I've never, in all my life, never done that. That's like the worst. I have. I left lug nuts loose on a wheel one time and it fell off. Ooh, no. Nope. Customer's car. Yeah, yeah. This is it. Yeah, that was, uh, that was a bad day. All right, let's get to work. <laughs> So you didn't tighten the bolts for the spacer because if you tighten them, it stays like this. So you have to keep them loose so that you can push this down into that lower control arm while you put uh -huh. these in. And then once you line all these up, I mean, you have to force them and all that stuff to line back up. I just forgot to tighten those. So once you get this bolt and that bolt in, you're supposed to tighten the spacer bolts. Oh, and the other thing I showed when I did that, you'll just loosen this. This bolt here, don't take it out, just loosen it. Yeah, so that take just this, drops. Yeah, and then take this bolt out, that bolt out. And then once you compress the car, uh, and you're sitting level, then tighten this up. Those freaking burgers, dude. So once everything's installed, all the spacers are in, tires are back on, and it's lowered back on the ground, the last step is gonna to be to tighten up all of the bolts on the lower control arm. All right, that pretty much wraps it up for this video. I hope you guys like the way this looks. I certainly do, I know Randy does. It looks amazing. This kit will be the same axle angle as the one and a half, so you won't have additional axle angle. There won't be additional axle wear with this kit. Yeah, it turned out good. I think it wasn't, it wasn't that bad to install, really. I mean, no rust on this thing, so that helps. I mean, you know, we were talking about if it was rusty, it would have been a little more difficult, but not too bad overall. Really, the, the lower control you. arm is a tough that's one. That's that's really the only th yeah the only issue. Everything else was unbolted and went right back together. Yep, right? yep. Well, that's pretty much it. Don't forget check out Randy Camping Randy yep. and uh, Camping Randy out on Instagram and YouTube, YouTube as and well. Then, uh, Ridgeline and then RidgelineStore.com. The, the, well, I'll put a link to his information and also a link to this kit in the description below. And if you guys like this or don't like it, let us know. And uh, we'll see you in the next video.